Hello, welcome to a, another online lecture for rational choice theory. Um, and I'm going to do a series of online lectures where I want to go through the proof of the von Neumann Morgenstern representation theorem. Um, the, we will talk a lot about this in class, so I'm not going to spend too much time on the motivation. So during the, the, the lecture, I'll spend a lot of time motivating this theorem and explaining what the theorem actually says. This is more trying to make sure we understand the technicalities of the theorem. Okay, so the assumptions is that Z is going to be a set of prizes. Um, and for the purposes of these lectures, even though I don't have it written down right here, it's important that Z actually is finite. So Z is a finite set of prizes. The theorem generalizes um, when Z is an infinite set of prizes, but there's lots of mathematical issues that arise. Um, and in general, I'm going to try to not spend too much time talking about those because those require some uh, some some background in mathematics to really appreciate what's actually going on. So we have a finite set here of prizes, and what we're interested in is uh, lotteries. So I'll, I'll use the term lotteries over z. And a lottery over z is just a probability measure over z. It's just some probability. It's just a way of assigning numbers between 0 and 1. Um, so for each prize, it's each the, the probability of that prize is how likely you are to, to get that prize if you play this lottery. Um, so we'll let capital P, it's just going to be the set of all functions uh, such that p is actually a probability measure, and since z is finite, we can just uh, define it very simply as saying it's the set of all functions from z to 0, 1, such that the sum over all of the prizes must be equal to 1. Um, so there's lots of uh, 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 issues here. If um, already we can see if z is infinite, uh, we would have to give a slightly more sophisticated definition. So let's not worry about z being infinite at this stage. And now we have this relation over the set of lotteries. And what this means is that we're assuming that the decision maker has opinions. These are the behaviors we can observe or somehow we can elicit these opinions from the decision maker. And his opinions are not over directly necessarily over the prizes themselves, but rather they're over lotteries over the prizes, which are, if you think about it, really complex objects. But So we're assuming that the decision maker has some opinions about the different lotteries, which, which lotteries uh, he, prefer, she, he or she prefers over other lotteries. Now there's three axioms we're going to assume. First of all, we want to assume that this relation on P is in fact a preference relation. So what does that mean? Well, that means it's going to be asymmetric and negatively transitive. And well, this implies lots and lots of things about how this preference relation behaves. So we've talked about this in class already. It uh, might be a good idea to remind yourself uh, what exactly it means to be a preference relation. So we're assuming that the agent has this preference relation over the set of all properties. So that's our first axiom. The second axiom is um, an axiom of independence. Independence. Now, what this axiom says is you have two lotteries, P and Q. Um, and we know that the agent strictly prefers P over Q. So the agent strictly prefers playing lottery P, strictly would rather play lottery P than play lottery Q, or be involved in P rather than be involved in Q. Now, what these compound lotteries say is that, well, um, there's going to be some number, so think of A as a probability itself. So with probability A, you're going to play P, and with probability 1 minus A, you're going to play some other, prob some other lottery R. I don't know what that lottery is, but it's just some other lottery R. Um, and you want to compare that to, with probability A, you play lottery Q, um, and with 1 minus A, you play lottery R. Now these two terms 
are the same. So, so think of it as saying you're flipping an A-sided coin or uh, you're, you're choosing with some probability A some event. So if probability, if A actually, if the event actually happens, and that'll happen with probability A, um, then the choice is between playing lottery P versus lottery Q, and we've assumed that the agent strictly prefers P over Q. Now, if the event doesn't happen, and that will happen with probability 1 minus A, no matter which situation you're in, you end up doing the exact same thing. So this is, this is why this is sometimes called independence. Your choice has to be independent of R is this irrelevant uh, outcome because in, in each of these compound lotteries, you'll do the same thing if the event doesn't actually happen. So this is our, the independence assumption. If the agent strictly prefers P over Q, then the agent must strictly prefer this lottery over this other lottery right here, this other compound lottery. So that's axiom A2. Axiom A3 is what's sometimes called the Archimedean axiom. And again, I'm, I'm giving motivation for these in class, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. But what this says is, suppose that the agent strictly prefers P over Q over R. So the agent has a strict preference of P over Q over R here. Um, then you read this in two parts. There exists some number between 0 and 1 such that the compound lottery between playing, getting his best outcome P with probability A and his worst outcome R with probability 1 minus A must be strictly better than getting his middle outcome Q. Okay, so R can't be so incredibly bad such that there's no probability, however small, such that um, with a small chance of getting R, the agent um, suddenly, you know, um, uh, uh, would just absolutely not want to prefer this compound lottery. Okay, now the other side of this is um, Q then should be strictly preferred to a mixture between P and R. Okay, so this is a mixture between getting P and R. So B is the other mixture with probability B you play P and with probability 1 minus B you play R. So we have these three axioms and what do we want to prove? So here's our main theorem. Our theorem is that if you have a binary relation on P and it satisfies these three axioms, that happens exactly when there exists a function, and so, well, this is a utility function, so this assigns utilities to the prizes, such that the agent strictly prefers lottery P over lottery Q if and only if the expected utility for playing lottery P is strictly greater than the expected utility for playing lottery Q. So this is really the expected utility of playing lottery P, and this is the expected utility uh, of Q. So we're able to represent the agent's preferences as we, we imagine that or we're able to represent this decision maker as somebody who's maximizing expected utility. Now it we don't know if he really, if, if the agent really did do these calculations to determine whether or not he, he prefers P over Q. Rather, you read this in the other direction. We say that the agent has these preferences. They satisfy these nice, normative, well-motivated well principles. And if that's the case, then I know that I can treat the agent as if he's maximizing expected utility because I know I can construct, I can find a utility function such that the agent strictly prefers P over Q if the expected utility of playing P is strictly better than the expected utility of playing Q. Moreover, and I'll talk about this more um, in, in the later lectures, um, this uh, function is unique up to linear transformations. That's what this says, that um, there might be another utility function that represents the agent's preferences in this way. Uh, but if that's the case, then that utility function is going to be a linear transformation of the utility function that we constructed up here. 
So this is the von Neumann Morgenstern uh, representation theorem, um, and in the next series of lectures, I want to go through explaining how you go about proving this for the special case when z, the set of prizes, is finite.